Steven, I had the best idea ever. I want to do a kid's show, but I want to call it the Kids Creativity Corner. But instead of C's, you put K's there. So it's Kids Creativity Corner. What do you think about that? Now, Stephen, I know we talked about this, uh, my my want to do like a kid show, but I came up with a name this weekend and you just heard it with with the voicemail because, you know, I, I called you when it when it happened, you know, to leave you a voicemail. But Kids Creativity Corner is a really good idea. KKK. That's like the perfect. <laughs> Such name a creative a name. Show. Creative with a K. Because you replace the C's with a K so that it rhymes. Triple K. Yeah creativity corner i don't have an outfit for it though but <laughs> the kids maybe you can wear like a, a white robe or something like white uniforms that'd be cool and i come out with a white robe on yeah yeah and then you sell you sell merch <laughs> it'll be more comfortable for the kids it'll be like their dad in a robe you know oh jesus Stephen, where did you take that <laughs> no i i think the kids creativity corner is like a real thing froze kids creativity corner or whatever i come up with when i decide to actually name it but i i we got like a corner extra corner here you build a set just like mr rogers's house because we have we have the lights and we can make it work we actually don't have the lights <laughs> we're, we're pretty much out of lights no, no, no. I've got the stoplights. Oh, oh. Mr. Rogers stoplights. You know, he had a stoplight. That's why I wanted a stoplight in my house. Man, I absolutely hated filming with those stoplights. Every time your skin would be like green, then red. And I'm like, ah, it's all over the place. I can't. Whatever. I like it. I Not like great it for a filming, lot. Especially when the light is beaming right on you. You know, someone left a comment on a video from 2015 or 14 yesterday because I was going through YouTube comments on the app. It, you know, it gives you a list of the latest comments. And mm -hmm. someone's like, it looks like this was shot today. And I guess they were saying that it was good quality or something. Oh, I don't know. I look back at some of those older videos and I, I don't know if it's YouTube, the compression back then. And now the player is much higher quality. And you look at the old videos and you're like, wow, this does not look that good. At least it was probably eyes. Nikon. Well, we were just shooting DSLRs in 1080p. And then actually at the time, yeah, it was just no, it was, 1080p. Yeah, it was Wasn't no 4K, 4K yet. Yeah. No, it's just a different time. And now things are higher resolution. But yeah, I'd like to get to that show one day. It's another thing that's on my list because I think I can help kids be creative through through photography and video with their parents phones usually and and then grow them up into to cameras and and i think it would be cool to come up with episodes that they could do i'll take hannah she doesn't fit i saw how she was handling that camera the other day <laughs> just beating up her little toy polaroid hey does that slide come out does it does the no, polaroid it, come out it's stuck it in pops out but it doesn't actually fully come out I mean, that's a cool toy. It is cool. And then if you hit like the one, two, three, it's like one, two, three, say cheese. <laughs> and it does all these little uh, cheesy sayings. I shoot raw. It's just like the bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> Remember recording raw. all the sayings for the bobblehead? Yeah. 30 seconds. We got 30 seconds of recording. We could put on that thing. Yeah. I shoot raw. Glass, 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 glass. Squirrel. How many bobbleheads do you have left that aren't broken? Oh, I don't know how many are not broken. I'm sure all the batteries have exploded by now because they were shitty China batteries. For those that don't know, Jared bought a ton of Frono's photo bobbleheads. What was that? It was 2015? I don't know. It was a thousand bobbleheads I had to order. And we had to make like a, a 3D scan of you, which was really just taking pictures of you twirling around. Yeah. And then we had to record all the audio for it. And then uh, it took like six months to ship from China or something, right? It wasn't that bad. I mean, they ended up being way too bottom heavy. The bottom base the was base. so heavy that the top would snap off. Is it shipping two double A batteries or something? It took two double A's because I didn't want to use buttons because yeah. double A's to me were more readily available Convenient. than someone trying to get a button battery. Now, they still work and I probably have about 500 of them left. Maybe I've got all the boxes over at my warehouse. They, they they were cool. I still like them. I like giving them away if they're not broken. Yeah. And then I would I would super glue them together and they would work. But you remember what happened the first time they sent back the design after getting the photos? I don't remember. My arms weren't big enough. <laughs> I sent it back. And I was like, my arms are they're looking like, but like this Dan. is a realistic to scale replica. No, that's like, like no, Dan. it's not. <laughs> Look at my ass. <laughs> And I wore, I wore a yellow shirt, not a purple shirt for you whatever did. reason. Yeah. I don't yeah. remember why at that time. Do you remember the promo video we did for that? It was uh, like an Apple spoof uh, for an iPhone commercial, but we did it for the Fronos photo bobblehead and how uh, revolutionary it was going to be and uh, how we took uh, high quality audio and it's played back on lo-fi speakers and advanced battery life with AA batteries. And let's play that real quick. For those that don't know, this is a video we put out back in 2014, it looks like. And just picture Jared sitting in front of a white background and 
uh, lots of text coming on the screen, just like the old school Johnny Ive iPhone teasers used to be. Today, I'm here to introduce to you the most revolutionary photo product of a generation, maybe even of an eon. What I'm going to show you, it goes well beyond photography. It may have a button on it, but what that button does is something that you've never seen before. So I'm proud to bring to you something new. This product's going to change photography forever. If you think you've seen revolutionary products, you haven't seen anything like this. We've developed this to only have one button that does everything you could ever imagine a photographer needing. I'm sure you're wondering what's going to happen when you press this button. Well, I can tell you, magic. You've been waiting to hear what this product is. Well, wait no longer. I'm very proud and excited to introduce to you the Fronos Photo Talking Bobblehead. This bobblehead is beyond my expectations. I never thought that it could look so much like me. Down to the arms, down to the butt. Look at the glutes on this. The glutes match my glutes. We spent months getting this bobble right. I was in a 360 degree suit with balls on my head, trying to get the right bobble from the computer. And I think we succeeded. We had to revolutionize the power source that we used with this bobblehead. And that's why we've developed something new. We don't use just one AA battery, we use two. And they're included with this bobblehead. We took the utmost care in making sure that we recorded this audio with the highest end Rode microphones. And when you play it back, you'll hear it on lo-fi speakers. We made sure to go to extremes when testing out this bobblehead that we even put it into a wind tunnel. Let's see how it does. So let's hear those 10 famous sayings. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. I shoot raw. Glass, 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 glass. I think I like the horizontal better. Squirrel. Let's unbox it and give it a snippy sniff. Thingamabobber. I think it's time for a ranty McRanterson. It's Postman Fro with a package for you. See ya. Anyway, this is episode number 97, where uh, we, we work our way through the different Raw Talks. Uh, not a lot of photo news again this week. There's not a lot going on in the industry. I mean, next week is NAB, which is a not going to be a big photo news week either, because that's mostly video-related stuff. But you could text us at 313-710-9729. So you know what pisses me off? Everything. Yeah, I knew that was your answer, and that's why I was waiting for it. You no, know, like when you when you when you go, you know, you're going to go to a restaurant, right? And you, oh, and we do there have some photo news stuff to talk about. But when you go to a restaurant, before you go, you like to look at the menu to see what they have. And I like to go to nicer restaurants. And generally speaking, they they put their their menu up on the site. But then you get there, and the items that were on the menu are not on the menu at the restaurant. And they're like, well, we, it's seasonal and it changes. I'm like, okay, okay, guys. Look, if you're going to have a menu on your website, at least keep it up to date exactly. or don't put it on there at all. Because what's the point of saying that you've got X, Y, and Z that when I show up, it's not there because you say it's seasonal. Well, then you should have taken it down because you're pissing people off. My favorite is going to restaurants with you, though, and you know exactly what you're going to order the first second you sit down. And when everyone else sits down, you expect them to know what they're going to order, too. And you're like, all right, you guys ready? We're like, I didn't even open the menu yet. Give me a minute. <laughs> we knew we were going. You should have studied that at breakfast. Every time. But I look, I get that certain restaurants have specials. Specials are different. But if you have a if you have a nice menu, don't put it online if you're not going to keep it up to date. And that's just because we went to a nice place. One of my favorite places in the city, Vernick in Philly. Um, I'm a big fan of it. And my buddy saw something on there that he had once before. And it was on the menu on the website. And when he got there, the menu was different. And they're like, oh, well, we should tell someone about that. I'm like, that should be the job every day yeah, yep. is that someone's job is to update that menu every day. And that happens at North Third, where I go to eat all the time, is at four o'clock, they update the menu for that night. Sometimes they forget. That's not a big deal because they always I just look at the date at the top. I've found that a lot of mom and pop places in general just don't even have a menu online. And it blows my mind. Like you can't find anything online. Yeah, that's terrible. You want to know something else that pisses me off about nicer restaurants? I don't know if you know this because you may not go to these restaurants often because you have a baby and all yes. and you don't live in the city. These are these places that are, you know, 
whether they have prefix menus, which I don't like, or just higher end, very similar to Vernick, but bougie the, is the these word. places that right at the bottom of the the menu, and it, and they say things like this. They say things like twenty percent will be included in all checks. Okay, so what does that word "included" mean to you, Stephen? Uh, it means it's earned into the total. It's part of the check. Like it's already there, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 They're fucking with you. Why? Because you get to it, and then they they add twenty percent. They add twenty percent after the fact. You go, but it says included. Or well, they're like, well, that's what it means. It means included at the end. I'm like, no. There's a difference between added and included. If you are going to add 20% to every fucking check, then you write 20% will be added to every check. Yeah. You don't say 20% is included because you're just trying, like you're trying to use words to, to, to lessen the sting of that 20%. But what you're actually doing is pissing people off me because most people don't talk. <laughs> most people just take it. They bend over and they just take it. I, on the other hand, I'm not going to take it. We're you not going to take it. No, we ain't gonna take it. We're not gonna take it anymore. Did you know I had that 45 as a kid and played it on my Fisher Price record player? <laughs> really? This white Fisher Price record player with a black turntable for 45s and it had like a red arm or something. Man, I used to scratch on that thing. I had. I had Twisted Sister. I don't know I even know what the B side of Twisted Sisters. We're not going to take it. Was I had a couple albums. We actually just got uh, Hannah a toy record player, um, but I think she has to be like two years or older to play with it. That's cool. Do you know what was a cool toy we used to have? I don't remember what it was, but it was like a record player and a slide viewer machine so you would put the slide viewer in it was like a story time mm. so the record would would play a story and then it would trigger the slide to move up or down and then show it to you on the projection in front of you on a little screen it was like i don't know what that slide viewer thing was called but it was pretty cool that's cool but anyway back to the people pissing me off you yeah they use the words 20 percent will be included with all checks and then you get it and they're like, that's not gratuity. 20% isn't the gratuity. 20% is the um, uh, gratuity could be added if you would like to add more. That's that's you. That's a service charge. I'm like, fuck you. Whatever you call it's a fucking, it's a, it's gratuity. You're forcing me to pay you 20%. Forcing. I've said this before and just tipping in general is just getting out of hand. Now the 20% gratuity, I get that, especially if you're at a sit down restaurant, uh, but I'm ordering via an app and picking up food or something for lunch and automatically it's 20%. By default, that setting is enabled. I get like maybe people will want to tip for sure, but it shouldn't by default be on 20% or even more. I've seen places do like 25% by default. You guys are just handing me the food. Don't tell Dan. Oh, Dan tips for everything. It's ridiculous. Well, he says he tips for everything. He also doesn't listen to our show, so we have no idea if he ever is going to reply to his raise that we offered him like two years ago at this point. Yeah, no, Dan, no raise. But yeah, that 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 just gets me every time. And if it gets you guys, I want to see text messages. 313-710-9729. Tell me, am I wrong that they use the word um, included? Am I an asshole? We already know that. Whoa. Don't answer that. Don't answer that. <laughs> but if something says included versus added, they're just trying to play games. And then they look at you like you're it. So my brother, my brother actually reacted to this one time. We were at this place. It was like a 27 course fucking place. I couldn't eat like I, I had some stomach issue that night. So I had like seven of the dish. I just wasn't it just wasn't working for mm. me. But and it, it was I was sick at that point for some reason. Um, but it comes at the end. My brother read on the website that a 20 percent, 20 percent will be included. So the the, the ticket comes at the end and it's like a three four hundred dollar meal right it's expensive for each person and he's like what is this why is there extra 20 percent and she's like well it says that it's going to be included and he's like included means included in the final price yeah added means you add it she's like, would you like me to take it off he's like that's not the point is that a gratuity or not well no it's a service charge gratuity is extra like fuck you and your service charge bullshit make a price make people feel the places that do it right just give you go above and beyond to make you feel welcome and if it says 20 percent is uh, is is added it's added it's already there so that you know every price already has that 
Fuck you. We're moving on, Stephen. Oof. I got a call yesterday from a restaurant. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my, my four by five negatives have been processed. Finally. Not by, not by me. Yeah, it took them uh, eight days. Not all business days. I'm assuming you won't be doing that again. I don't know what I'm going to do. I want to see how they did. I want to see if I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. Right. Like, I want to see what I did. But when the guy called, he's just like, you can pick them up tomorrow. He didn't be like, yeah, they turned out great. Right. Because that's not their job <laughs> to tell you. But I'm like, are there images there? And he said, please, they are please. well exposed. Are they in focus? No, I can't. He didn't. I didn't ask that. But he said they are well exposed. See, the best ever. That's so hard. Influencer. So hard. <laughs> Steven, you have to figure it out. You have to be like one in, in tune with the sun. You have to follow a light meter that tells you everything. Steven, <laughs> Steven, you have to follow a light meter on your phone. Then you have to guess where the aperture is because you don't have mid ranges of apertures. It goes from 2.5 to 4. So you have to go in between you to find 3.2. <laughs> the lens is from 1940 go fuck yourself <laughs> like so it, it's all a game man and so i'm gonna go pick those up after after so we you record are the here. best film photographer ever is what you're saying well i have to go pick them up after we record here but the question is how do i scan them if i broke the scanner last week i thought you got a new one I did from B&H. What'd you get? The same scanner. They're, they don't make any oh. other scanner. <gasps> I didn't know if there was a... I'm sure there's a newer model. There of, is not a newer model. Really? They are They are no longer going to make scanners. That thing's got to be 15 years old. It's 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 maybe 10 years old, the V850. And you're telling me, me the technology hasn't been upgraded since? Uh, I don't think there's enough market for it. Wow. Epson. Let's see. Epson. I mean, I assume V8. the basics, like maybe it's USB-C now or something like that. Yeah, it's the old square USB. Or a higher resolution. Like the resolution has to be higher. Steven, 10 years. Tw 2014. Wow. It's all about lenses and stuff. Look, I think what I'm going to end up doing is getting drum scans from someone if I'm going to put these together right. And those yeah, are like yeah. 60 bucks a pop, depending on who you go to. So maybe I'll work out a deal to promote them hey would you like some free promotion in exchange for not making money uh, do you guys want to shoot film and then scan it and put it online because that's what well, i do yeah i had a call with even a though film i've company. always been against that <laughs> steven steven <laughs> steven i'm just playing steven. devil's advocate <laughs> no steven there's a difference between what i'm <laughs> doing and what those people are doing i'm just messing i'm doing four by five <laughs> it's a different game it's i'm processing film. them yeah. Okay. I had a call with Cinestill <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Cinestill, they make film and they make chemistry kits to send to people because they saw what I was doing. That's cool. This is not sponsored because I, I just can't guarantee. I'm like, I can't guarantee you but guys maybe anything. it will be. No, I, I just... How much money can they be making? It's fucking film. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, no, but what I... What I you know my thoughts. If you want to try film because you've never shot film or processed your own stuff... I suggest that you shoot film and you process it yourself just to get an understanding and a feeling for what it's like to change film, to develop it, to be in the dark. The entire not, process. Yeah, right. The entire process. So they sell kits. What was super weird, and I don't I don't understand it. They're telling me that their development time is three and a half minutes with their special developer. Huh. The reason is they have you develop it like 82 degrees. And usually if you develop at a hotter temperature, you bring out more grain in the film. But then they said that their their developer also is fixer at the same time. Oh. I don't understand how that works. It's I just have an to get all a in one solution? Yeah. It develops and then after five or six minutes it's fixed. So I don't know how that I don't know how that chemical works. That's pretty cool. So if you're interested, I don't have an affiliate link or anything with them, but it's Cinestill Film, uh Cinestillfilm.com. See, that's and, what scares me about film, though. Just the chemistry, the process in general. Like, there's so many different types of solution you could use when you have an all-in-one solution from Cinestill. Is that the same you know? as developing it, you know, individually in each bath or what? Well, so so what I said to the guy is, I'm like, how many uses do you get out of it? And he told me how many uses. I'm like, but how do you know it's still good? That's what and I mean, like, yeah. well, that's Well, he goes, that's why we recommend doing clip tests. I'm like, first off, I've never done a clip test um, well, it's probably when for I the was hardcore film. film shooters. 
Yeah, but but if you're a hardcore film shooter, you're using different developers. Sure, yeah. And fixer. Like I have D76 from Kodak, right? That's what uh Retro Photo uses, the place I got my camera from and the guy that gave me all the advice and he develops black and white for people all over the country that send it in. He uses D76. If it's good enough for him to use it for all of the processing at the store, then it's good enough for me. Um but I would probably I'll probably be mixing chemicals more often fixer you can reuse developer you you don't i would make a big batch of of fixer but developer yeah you don't reuse it now you can you can put replenisher in there but it extends everything or you could water it down and that just extends the uh the life of it but your development times extend and i don't i want the most potent possible how are you getting rid of the chemicals once they are used I'm legitimately getting rid of them the proper way, Stephen. You got something in your eye, Stephen? I'm. I got something <laughs> in my eye. That's not a wink. Because uh, I was told what about that you like can silver and all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm not doing enough to recover silver. I remember the silver tanks that would collect all the silver once a month. They would come by when they were full and silver recovery. My guy yeah, at, the, yeah. at the camera store would do that, and every time he gets enough silver, it's like twenty three hundred dollars. So the EPA will be making a pit stop at your house very soon. What you would do is you would dump the chemicals into a bucket, a specific bucket. And then there was a silver recovery machine. I remember. And then they chipped the silver off of the recovery machine. Yeah. It brings it all. It's pretty crazy, guys, that black and white is all about silver. Color isn't, but black and white chemistry, uh, you you pull the, the silver out of. Uh, but also color. You can do some of that anyway. Um, but anyway, uh, I'll be getting those negatives back, which means I got to scan some. The Phillies are home for the next 10 days. They play nine games out of 10 days. Tonight, it might drizzle or rain. So I'm deciding whether I'm going. This is Thursday. But they play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It does look like it, uh, the rain is pushed back a little bit. It looks like it's seven or eight o'clock. It's going to start. And it won't even be that heavy of a rain. It's more of like a drizzle tonight. So you might be able to get by at least with batting practice. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I got I got to see my pictures first because I want to I want to know what I did and what I should continue to do versus not do. Mm. And that's why as soon as this is done, I'm, I'm going to make like a tree and get out of here. <laughs> eclipse photo, Stephen. Did you shoot the eclipse? Uh, yeah, I shot the clouds that were in front of the eclipse. <laughs> you know, you know, it was great at like two o'clock to two forty seven. You had like Beautiful. Minimal cloud cover. Blue skies, barely any clouds in the sky. And then what? That 30 minutes that the eclipse actually happened. All clouds. And the most dense, thick clouds. <laughs> layers and layers of clouds. Yeah. Three o'clock comes around till. So from 245 to 345 with the uh, eclipse happening around uh, 320. Oh, actually, no. It was that like three. So the major full eclipse here, which was 91 percent, 323, gonna, right? Was yeah, 323. So at three o'clock, no sun. Four o'clock, clear skies. Yep. Yep. yep Did yep. I get upset? No. Uh, I saw a bunch. There's a lot of photos floating around and it's great. People, people were like, Jared, are you going to be photographing the eclipse? And the answer is no. I don't want to photograph the eclipse. I really don't. Thankfully, I did not burn my eyes out. The $10 Amazon glasses actually worked, which was cool. <laughs> I mean, I can't really see you right now. Is that weird? <laughs> no, it's me every day, Stephen. Then what are you going to do with them? Put them in a drawer till the next time in, tw in, in 40 years? <laughs> I gave my mom one and she handed them back. She's like, here, keep it for, uh, for next time. I'm like, what, in 20 years? <laughs> well, you know, so, so the, the, the terms that were pissing me off during the, the eclipse was, this is a once in a lifetime experience. And it's like, it's not really a once in a lifetime experience. Well, it's not. It's maybe not. for someone like you that has the freedom to travel wherever they want, whenever they want. But it's not a once in a lifetime experience because you have the ability or options to go and do that if you wanted. Not everybody 2017, does, it happened in saying. the United States. 2017 in the United States. Yeah, 2024, where? it happened in the United Well, it was in the South Carolina. It ran through that area, which is where I went. I'm saying, what so, if somebody doesn't have the funds to travel? It's not that yeah, simple. Yeah, Stephen, Stephen, I'm coming from a standpoint of you can you can find a way and I get it. If you don't have money, no, you can't. But I'm saying it's not once in a lifetime. I'm saying because I'm simply it's more saying than once in a lifetime. It's once in a lifetime for certain people. Literally, they will never be able to do it again unless they're in the path of totality, which will happen probably in another how many years, you know? No, it won't. It's coming through Philly in, in, in 40 years. 
Yeah. And then everybody's going to be like, this is a once in a lifetime experience. And it but may no. be for them. It may no, be for them is what I'm saying. Loops. We have hyperloops in 40 years and you can just zap yourself to some place. <laughs> exactly. Well, in that case, then no, it's not a once in a lifetime event. <laughs> so, I, you know, the photos coming out of it are what you would expect. They're pictures of an eclipse. Crazy, right? You, you get, um, they all, they're all going to look the same. My thing is, if I went and traveled for an eclipse to see it, it's what, two, three minutes where it's full totality, this right? Was, this was potential of, at max, four minutes. Four minutes, okay. I don't know if I would want to spend my time focusing on the photography aspect. I might just want to experience that three, four minutes of full yeah. totality. That's the rub for me. I, I don't know. Unless I just simply had a, a timer, a tripod, all that stuff, which I think I guess most people had if they were just doing a straight up shot of full totality. But, you know, a lot of people doing composites or different kinds of shots and framing and stuff like that, that they actually need to be behind the camera. And I don't know. Are you, You're kind of missing out on that once in a lifetime event. Yeah, I suggest that you just look at it and people are just they, they, they find it odd that I don't take a camera everywhere or that I wouldn't go and shoot this. And it's like it's not that big of a deal, especially around here. I knew that 91 percent is not totality and it's not going to look look as good. I mean, I think if you did it in a really unique way, that's when it matters. But if you're simply just taking a straight up centered shot of full totality, everybody's going to have that shot. The only way that, that I would like it is if, you know, you flew Red Bull planes in front of the sun <laughs> and then you would and then you would it would be. Unique. Who does Look, that? Peter Peter McKinnon did that. You've probably already seen it with Red Bull, which is an awesome gig to get. Right. I you sent him it to you and I was like, now this is epic. I don't I know you're going to say I know you're going to say it's not (laughs) I don't think it's I don't think it's epic all right I think it's I think it's unique I think they executed on an idea that they had and I think they accomplished the execution of the idea that they had and that takes money to be like we're going to fly two planes Red Bull planes here and we're going to try to take it during totality uh, execution success, yeah, right? For they, sure. They did that. I think, you know, what makes it unique and, and, and cool is the fact that it's something different. Yep. I don't think it's the most epic thing in the world. I think that they accomplished what they set out to accomplish. You know, it's once in a lifetime what they did. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I will say when I was looking through stories and I came upon that image, I stopped in my tracks and I, I really looked. Not many photographs do that for me, especially when everyone's posting their, you know, eclipse photos and you just see the same one over and over. That one, I was like, wow. Yeah, something different. Yeah, it definitely caught my attention for sure. I just question how long it took the preparation to get all of that right. I believe it took weeks. They were doing, you know, run throughs. I think they flew the plane before the eclipse started. And they probably only had, what, three, four passes, maybe? Because yeah, you only have four minutes to get that I shot. I think they had a couple passes. And if you look at the Red Bull photos, you got Peter's photo is probably the better of the ones that I've seen from there. Yeah. Because his angle was better. Yeah. Um, now, it's not direct, perfectly centered or anything, but I think it's I think it's right where it needed to be. I think it looks great. The behind the scenes made it look like it was either the 200 to 800 Canon he was using or the 100 to 500. I couldn't tell, but it was one Uh, of those extending uh, super zoom telephoto lenses. I know he had a 400 and I know he had a 600. I don't know about the zoom. Like a 200 to 800 would kind of be good, but don't forget like I saw a zoom lens on a tripod, but I also saw a lot of cameras. So maybe that one wasn't his. Yeah, no, I got to I'll ask him what what he ended up using. Um to get it and 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 remember you're just seeing a picture on instagram so there's no saying sure. and you know he was using a slower shutter speed oh, and the reason the, you know he was the prop blur yep if you don't do plot prop blur you're an amateur but does that mean he's panning because if you're panning how are you going to get the eclipse being not blurry he might he might uh he has a good question and I, and it's not a composite so you can't go too slow to really get an extreme prop blur but you can't go too fast to completely get rid of the prop blur it's kind of that happy medium but then you also don't want the red bull planes to be blurry you know because you're not painting yeah, I, with them because i can sure tell the that they are was. a little like like you said they are you're, a you're looking on instagram if you looked full res i'm sure you can see the imperfections but regardless awesome shot kudos to him i think he did a great job I think it would have been about one one eightieth, so a hundred and eightieth of a second. That's what, what you, I've done. What do you typically have? Like one fiftieth, one thirtieth when you're doing prop blur? You can do one one eightieth because you don't need full. You just need a little bit, and what, that's what I've done when I shot the air show. Is I've gone to like one one eightieth of a second. But and, again, you're and, panning and with it work. I don't remember if I'm panning if they're flying towards me or across. Like, I mean, I could take a deep dive into the photos right now. I'm not going to, but. 
but I think that's, you know, different sky and everything. It was a little different, obviously. I, and I thought it was interesting because at first I'm like, man, how did he get the underside of the plane to, you know, show the, the Red up. Bull logo? But yeah, I saw the behind the scenes video and it looks like they had some LEDs on board right under the wings to perfectly oh. light up the yeah. uh, Red Bull logo, which was cool. They needed that. I was wondering oh, yeah. that too. It would have been just a silhouette, which... Also would have been cool, but obviously it was for Red Bull. No, no, and that's no, the no, 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 Stephen. The whole the check doesn't get written unless it well, says Red Bull. If it, if it wasn't for Red Bull, I think the silhouette would have been cool. But yeah. obviously it's for Red Bull. Yeah. I want to see the bad takes. I want to see how many shots it took for him to get that one killer shot. Yeah. I don't even know what, what cannon body he ended up using. Probably an R5 if I had I to bet guess. an R5 and he cropped the crap out of it. Eh, maybe, no, he probably didn't because shot with a four or 600. Well, they said 1,500 feet off the ground, something like that. So it, I'm sure there's cropping involved, but whatever. Let, let's, let's, let's move on. You know, so the other day we're testing something out and we have to come up with some cool ways to test this thing out. And uh, my friend was like, you should do a roller coaster. Like a roller coaster would be a good way to, you know, test out stabilization of a camera because it's a roller coaster. It's shaking around. You never know how's that camera going to work with that stabilization. So I reach out to a bunch of different uh, parks and I reach out to one that I used to go to as a child. My brother has gone there recently with his kids and people love going there. And I wanted to check because on their website, it says influencers and bloggers. We do have... Did they say global influencers though? Shit. They didn't say global. <laughs> well, there it you just go. Said, You're too big for said, them. It just said influencers and, uh, you know, it said bloggers and whatever, <laughs> you know, apply here, list how many subscribers you have, Unreal. where you are, what you're looking to do. And I was like, <laughs> two million plus. That's right. <laughs> then I hit enter and the web form didn't work. Oh, <laughs> so the web form didn't work. So I contact them on social media and they're like, uh, do the web form. I'm like, I did. It didn't work. And then they're like, email us. Well, the email goes to the same person that I was talking to on Instagram. So I just, you know, I requested, Hey, I'm looking to test out this product. I, um, want to buy, I'll buy a ticket. I'll pay for my fast track. I I'm not looking for a handout here. I'm just looking for permission because their website says that you cannot rec have any recording devices on when you're going on a on, and on a roller coaster, probably just simply for safety reasons, I assume. Yes, right? it's for safety reasons. Now, there's no way that I, you know, my mom. Dude, you want to know something funny? What you want to know? What my mom did? What she do? In night in in 1987, like or 80, whenever we were in Disney, it may have been 1986. You know that Betamax I have upstairs, the big one it's with on the rainbow the comparison set. Yeah, yeah, you know that rainbow strap. Oh yeah. So we're going on Thunder Mountain Railroad. Ooh, that's Remember a shaky one. Thunder Mountain Railroad, my mom is hand holding <laughs> the Betamax camcorder. You want to bring going this giant camcorder? Sure, why not? Totally safe. <laughs> I think you might have the footage. Remember when you were making my uh, So This Is 40? I had footage of you as a child in Disney. I don't remember seeing roller coaster footage, though. Yeah, I think there's a there should be a clip of her on Thunder Mountain Railroad. That's awesome. Where it's shake. I mean, it's beta, so it's for what? 480 lines of resolution. No, <laughs> but no, it's not 480. It was probably 270. And what you were trying to bring on this roller coaster was way smaller than something like that oh, well <laughs> yes yes and i could have probably worn a jacket and just done it or taken it out as we're going up the hill right i'm sure people take their phone out all the time to do video yeah so i anyway i didn't want to be that guy sure and i yeah, didn't want to ask permission first yeah you know i well in this case yes because i don't want to get in trouble I, I i always get in trouble and i don't want to get in trouble so i met i email them all the information, and then they get back to me with, as I stated this morning, unfortunately, we cannot accommodate your request as we do not allow any film during filming during public hours, and we do require several several days notice. I gave a couple days notice, and it's just I said it when I, when I got it. Uh, even for future dates, we typically only work with coaster publications coaster. who promote our destination <laughs> to travel outlets, as filming on rides is very rare. Is that a thing? Coaster publications? And then she says, you would be able to take photos from the ground, avoiding the privacy of other guests and off and off ride shots. We appreciate your loyalty and hope you have a wonderful time. No, I will not have a wonderful time because I'm not showing up with that stupid reply. Um, Why can't they simply just accommodate you for one ride before the park opens or maybe after the park closes? At some point, you can ride by yourself. You just need five minutes and you're done. 
You're asking ahead of time. I mean, you're a freaking global influencer. <laughs> well, that's the point. And, I, and my reply back was 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 this. Was I I'm a understand. global influencer? Do you know who I, I am? <laughs> yes. I understand wanting to work with just coaster enthusiasts, but please keep in mind, there are plenty of people who don't follow those niche channels, but still enjoy roller coasters. Yes. This is similar to when I work with, the, with musicians. I'm not a music blog, but my viewers still listen to music. It's just like... Crazy how that works. Works, right it's it's like well wait a second so you only want to promote to roller coaster enthusiasts who already know you exist exactly if anything you want to do the opposite you want Try to, to get people that wouldn't normally go to go to your park <laughs> not everybody's into roller coasters but they would see that your park is an awesome place and it's fun family and friendly there's great food there's great candy there's great everything and the rides are really good so it's just like the the proper reply would have been Hey, sorry, this is a little too short notice, but if you would like to attend next weekend, what we can do is if you do this, pick one roller coaster, we can set it up so that you can ride it and you can record and film on that one three minute fucking roller coaster. Exactly. How is that going to, how is that a problem? So instead of saying no, you're saying yes. And now all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, I went to this awesome place and you guys should consider taking your family there because it's really cool. And, and let's just say too, this is not Disney World. This is not a huge park. It's more Steven, regional. Don't tell them that. I'm not saying which park it is. Don't tell them it's not <laughs> Disney because you, you just want to defend Disney. No, no, no. I'm simply saying they're not going to be busy on a random weekday. Well, they're closed. They're closed right now on the weekdays. Oh, they're closed on weekdays. But I could still go. Maybe they're doing testing and, and maintenance on weekdays. But even weekends. They're not that big of a park where like they're going to have nonstop people riding oh, the roller will. coaster. You on really beautiful so? days now, this time of year, yeah. I would have gone on Sunday, which would have been a lesser time. But that brings up an interesting story about Disney I, I never told you. I probably did tell you. When I was on tour with Perry Farrell, we had, a, we had a tour stop in Orlando. And so I'm on the tour bus. This is 2007. I'm like, let's go to Disney. Perry, you want to go to Disney? And, I, and I'll call and I'll set it up. So I'm like, what the fuck's that number? 407 W Disney or whatever, 419, you know, whatever they go with. Because So I figured it out. I call and I'm like, hey, I've got a celebrity musician that's a global influencer in 2007 <laughs> who would like to stop at the park. We're playing in Orlando. Would this be possible? They connect me with the right people. And they're like, oh, when are you coming? How many people are you? We can give you one of the Disney people. Yes. Right? So they get you one of the Disney people. They give us tickets. They're going to set up for a picture to be taken with Perry on one of the rides. Did it cost Day anything? Of, no. Day of <laughs> the event, it. Perry's like, I can't go without my kids. It wouldn't uh, be the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I tell them this because I don't want to surprise them. And they're like, well, we can't give you the private tour guide anymore, but we'll walk you around for a minute to one of the rides or whatever, and you can just have entry to the park. So we did. We went. We had a fun day, but um, it wasn't the same as if Perry was going to go. He came up with, oh, the, the, I can't go without my kids. By the way, uh, I, I, I was spotting the, the private tour guides out when we were at Disney a few weeks back, and the clientele who are paying for those private tour guides... It's once in a lifetime, Steven. <laughs> They're, they have a lot of money for sure. What they're wearing, what they're dressed like. They look very, uh, very well off. Let's just say do that. They, do they say, do you know who I am a lot? <laughs> but I only know that because of the Nikon tour or Z6 trip. Remember? In yeah, Disney? Z6. And we got yeah. to do private tours and jump to the front of the line right away. And it's like, wow, this is awesome. Is this what it feels like to be a celebrity in Disney World? You mean us? Oh, no. I'm saying people that pay for those private tour guides. Oh, but do you know how much they pay? A ton of money. I can it's only at least five thousand dollars. I'll I'll Google it. Right, right, right. Meow. Like I said, it's got to be a good amount, a nice chunk of change because these people, what they were wearing, how they were dressed, yeah, they have some money. Disney VIP tours. Disney VIP is Walt Disney. Four hundred and fifty to nine hundred dollars per person, making our kingdom yours. Explore parks with your own VIP tour guide during a customized experience filled with attractive benefits like hand jobs. The team at Disney <laughs> VIP tour nice. services will plan the most effective, if efficient, enjoyable way for a group of up to 10 guests to see and do the things on your list. Just tell your personal VIP guide what you'd like to do. Man, I wish it was like, um, what was that HBO show where you go to that land that park and you can like sleep with whoever you want to there but it's all in the game because they're robots westworld uh, westworld westworld yeah, yeah yeah damn westworld sounds fun you can live out all your fantasies and they're robots <laughs> you know you know that's not disney so with the private tour guide are they 
jumping to the front of the line like we did with because I know with the Nikon trip, yes, we only jumped to the front of the, front of the line because we had like no time. We were just going from ride to ride real quick. Let and me that's con- it. continue to read 10 guests to see and do the things on your list. Just tell your personal VIP guide what you'd like to see and they'll cu- customize your day to your desire. After being picked up in a private vehicle from your Walt Disney Ooh. Resort World Hotel accommodations or branded partner resort accommodations, enjoy unparalleled hospitality and experience some of your favorite attractions alongside a VIP tour guide. Some of the personalized services include pre-arrival planning, a flexible start time picked by you, visits to multiple theme parks in one or more more days, the ability to enjoy some of your favorite attractions efficiently through most lightning lane entrances, shared insights from your highly knowledgeable VIP tour guide through your tour, a free night at the castle where you get to sleep with the princess. Oh, pricing and reservations. Get essential details. I wonder if you can pay to sleep with the princess. (laughs) I don't know. Or the prints, if you're into that. Pricing, ranging from $450 to $900 per hour, depending on the season. The park administration, uh, uh, park uh, park admission is required for each park visited on tour and is not included in the price. (laughs) So you got to pay for the regular ticket on top of that? Yes. No before you go. Wow. All VIP tours required valid theme park admission, which is not included in the price. Disney VIP tour participant is fully security, full security screening, including bag checks. You do not get to sleep with your tour guide. Disney private VIP tours at Walt Disney World Resorts are very popular and may be limited in availability. So if I went for eight hours to say Magic Kingdom, probably during peak season, you're looking at nine hundred dollars an hour per person. Yes. That's insane. I just got I to the minimum duration. I grand for one day. Steven, minimum, du- minimum duration. All private VIP tours must be booked for a minimum duration of how many hours do you think? Uh, I'm going to say six. Seven continuous hours. Wow. And your party may include up to 10 guests, including infants. Entertainment offerings are subject to availability and may be restricted by capacity. You incur a cancellation fee equal to two hours at the booked rate per tour if you do not provide at least 48 hours of notice while canceling. Guests 17 years and under must be accompanied by a paying participating parent or guardian. So real quick, if we do the math, if it's 450 for the minimum charge per hour yeah. per person, yeah. if you have seven hours, 450 times seven and 10 people, you're looking at $31,000. $31,000. Oh, yeah. $31,000 for a party of 10 for seven hours at the minimum price. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is upper echelon. Wow. Yeah. Well, are you bougie or are you not bougie, Stephen? Hey, guys. Stephen here editing this episode, and I just quickly read over what Jared was reading. And as usual, his eyes deceived him. Uh, you're actually paying four fifty dollars to $900 for a group of up to 10 people for a private tour guide. It's not per person, but it is per hour. So it would cost a group of 10 roughly about $3,000 to $6,000 for a seven-hour period. Now, that's still a ton of money. Don't get me wrong. But it's not the kind of numbers that we were talking about. Just wanted to correct that. Let's get back to the show. I learned that Disney has these party, these these uh, vacation planning things where they will like garnish money from your uh, garnish money from your paycheck to put together a fund that uh, a travel fund. So you decide when you want to go to Disney, and then they will come up with the math, and you put it into like a saving a Disney div, Disney holding account to like pay for your trip ahead of time. They have the whole DVC too, which is the Disney Vacation Club. It's like a timeshare type deal. Wait a second, double vaginal, double anal? <laughs> no, no, that's not, not DVDA. That's DVC. DVC. Didn't we put that on Todd's pass once? I put DVDA, head of DVDA Wasn't on Todd's. Wasn't that when we went to the AVN Awards? I, well, did I put that on yours, head of DVDA? I think you put it on mine, yeah, because it was just me and you. <laughs> uh, uh, By the that's way, funny. back to roller coasters. You know what park has a great set of roller coasters? What? And a great set of something else? Uh, Dollywood. Oh, yeah. I've been Dolly to Dollywood. Dolly Park. Oh, dude. There's probably 10 roller coasters there. The one roller coaster. Uh, Pigeon Forge. Yeah, Pigeon Forge, yep, Tennessee. Lightning Rod I went on. That yeah. thing feels like it's going to fall apart, but it is the fastest, craziest roller coaster I've ever is been Is that a on. wooden coaster? It's like a wooden roller coaster, yeah. But Remember it's Hercules so insanely Adorney? fast. Hercules, is it Hercules at Dern? That shit would shake and rattle my head. I don't even know if I can ride uh, roller coasters I don't, anymore. They had like the, the Wild Eagle, I think, too. That was a really big one there. There's a bunch of different ones, but those roller coasters were solid, awesome roller coasters. Yeah. I thought like there was nobody there. I don't know how that park even exists, to be honest, because there probably oh, had to be like 200 people when we went. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But um, 
b- back to back to what we were doing. We couldn't make the roller coaster thing happen. She replied back after I replied back with my thing about listening to music. Yes, it's a hundred percent out of the question. Per our stated <laughs> policy, detailed on our website, no guests may film on a ride during times we are open to the public. We certainly respect all types of content creators, but filming for us is truly limited to traditional news and industry relevant outlets. Oh, I gotta love it. Fuck you. Are you a coaster publication? If not, F off. Yeah. Oh, relevant tra- traditional news. Oh, okay. WS69. Oh, you're a newspaper in some small town? Sure. You're a local news <laughs> news uh, caster. But you're a YouTuber with 1.5 million subscribers? No way. No, that's global. That might give people a reason to come to your place. But no, you just want to use the, uh, the Pittsburgh Gazette Exactly. Jeanette, exactly. And, and that reaches 12 people. You uh, guys are good. Anyway, we decided to do something else. Skydiving. Yeah. We thought skydiving would be a good test. And we went to the skydiving place and I didn't <laughs> and, jump. And, and I showed up to try and convince them because we didn't know if they were going to even let us. I think you uh, called up and they, I called and they weren't being very helpful on the phone. They probably didn't really understand what we were trying to do. But basically, we were I just like, can we, we have a new camera. Can we give it to you? And then you could do something cool with it. Jump out of a plane, for example, <laughs> and uh, maybe spin around, do some cool things. And then that's it. We keep the footage and we leave. We'll pay you whatever. At first, she was like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. And then she was like, oh, you just want us to take it and bring it up there? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, oh, sure. Just ask a skydiver. I don't care. <laughs> we didn't have to sign anything. It was very chill. Uh, that whole lifestyle, man, of skydiving, I will say, is a different world. You just you just have to find... We just had to get a skydiver to do it. And Stephen, tell him what happened when you found the right person. So when we did find the right person, his name was Dean, actually, uh, he ended up being a fan of the channel. He said that he has an R5, and then I said, you know, we shoot with the R5 too, and he's like, oh. R5, T-O-O, not T-W-O. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I was like, we have a channel, it's called Frono's Photo, are you aware of it? And he's like, wait, 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 what's your name? Are, are you Steven? And uh, yeah, he's a fan of the channel, and it all worked out. He's like, yeah, I'll be glad to do this with you guys. You know, I watch you guys all the time. I always recommend any reviews that you do. Uh, I like that you guys are straight to the point, you know, no BS, all that kind of stuff. And it was cool. We chatted with him for a while and hung out for like two hours there while he jumped out of a plane with the uh, with the new secret camera. And What's the place called? Cross Keys? We'll promote them. Cross Keys Skydive. Uh, it's actually down the street from where I grew up. My parents literally live five minutes over. Like They're the neighborhood next door for the most part. And I'm only about 10, 15 minutes away from there myself. So I just ran over to try and convince them. And then you met me after once we did convince them. I've jumped before. I did it once and I don't want to do it again just because one for one is good. I did one too. of the guys I said that to, he's like, oh, I'm coming up on 10,000 jumps. 10,000. Like, cool. And I asked him, I'm like, wait, how do you, how does that even work? out like how many are you doing a year he said he does 800 per season i mean you're, you're talking probably two or three jumps a day it's got to be more than that yeah sometimes. more than that and it's 30 dollars a jump unless they have you know for for pros so i paid for the guy's jump and gave him money which he didn't ask for yeah which would pay for another six jumps or he something, actually five jumps. wanted to pay for the jumps himself i was like you're not paying for the us jumps for, for all the free content over the years and we're like no, no no you're helping us out man please take the money yeah yeah, we're giving you, we're giving you, I'm paying you and he's a really you, nice guy. And thank you. Yeah. So it was, it was cool to test it out that way. So we got our tests, uh, did a bunch of other stuff with it too. Almost got yelled at and arrested at the Liberty Bell. Don't know if we can, <laughs> I don't want to put them on blast by showing the video, uh, but I go into the Liberty Bell, which you have to get searched and all that stuff. It's like and the TSA, yeah. Before I do anything, I ask the park ranger standing by the bell, can I do Or what can I do? He says what I can do. I start to do that. And out of nowhere, this woman is yelling from the distance. Stop. I don't stop because you you have to stay calm. And I don't want to ding the bell. (laughs) You don't want to add a second crack. (laughs) I didn't want to ring the bell. And this this everybody right here is the second crack when global influencer Jared Poland from Frono's Photo decided to test out a new camera and ding the bell. Well, a bunch of years ago, a guy got arrested. He came in with a hammer. I remember that. It must that, have yeah. been before the security had. Uh, I think that's the, why the, they got the security. Yeah, a guy. It was a a mentally disturbed sure. person. Better to have a hammer and hit a bell than have a gun for and sure. shoot people. For sure. But he rang the bell, so good for him. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't believe how close you got to the Liberty Bell. I mean, you I were can't wait to show the footage away. I, and I'm shocked that he allowed you. I feel like that security guard probably got yelled at after. I 
I don't know. He said, according to the rules, you are following all of the rules. But you, that's like... What, that, that's like me being like, okay, can I just slide under the bell? I won't touch it, but I just want to look <laughs> under it. But is it okay that I'm only a few you, inches away? You just wanted to upskirt it, that's which I much. did. That's exactly what you did. <laughs> um, but no, his, his thing was, to the best of my knowledge about all of the rules here, you are not interfering with other guests. You gave them free path, you know, paths to do things. You're not getting in their way. You're being patient, waiting for them to get their pictures taken. You're not being bossy. You're not touched because they have they have ro- a rope up and that's it. And I'm like, how I'm like, how far over the rope am I allowed to go? He's like, as long as you don't touch the bell. I was like, OK. But again, that to me is the whole point of the rope. Is to not go any farther. Uh, maybe it's don't not go, the real don't bell. Cross the room, basically. Maybe it's not the want. real bell. Maybe it's a backup bell. Maybe yeah. it's like the Stanley Cup. You never know. You never. You never. You never know. But anyway, so what, that, if, that, what if we look at the footage and you see the upskirting of the bell and there's like a little like sticker that says like "Made in China" or made something? Made in China. <laughs> oh, Stephen, that's terrible. That's terrible. I can't believe you would you would say something like that, Stephen. Oh, that would be um, funny. Anyway. uh there's there's still rumors going around in the industry. Quickly, I'll hit hit on some of that. Sony Alpha Rumors is claiming that a new lens is coming next week. Another one of those, what, 16 to 25 2.8 is what they're rumoring. See, it's going to be probably another expensive lens, though. And I just think they can't compete with someone like Tamron that has, you know, a 17 to 28 similar focal length. It's also a 2.8, but it's probably going to be four or five hundred dollars less if I had to guess based on the yeah. past. The 20 to 50 is another one where it's like, I just it's too expensive. It's a weird That's focal length thing. range. Yeah, I think they're trying to do compete with third party glass, but they'll compete all day. Like they'll beat them in quality and focus. For sure. There's no doubt about that. But the problem is someone starting out, doesn't. it doesn't matter. It's good enough. The third good parties enough are good, good enough. enough and they don't need the best of the best. They don't need to spend that extra money. They so care more we'll about see. their budget than the actual optical quality of the lens. We'll see what that ends up being. Um, then, you know, on the Canon rumors front, they're, they're talking about sometime like May 21st to May 23rd for the potential of getting... Um, announcements for the R5 II and the R1. I mean, I think those cameras have already been registered, they believe, for for the oh, yeah. registry for the Wi-Fi and stuff. We know this stuff's coming. I was going to say, just, based on, you know, the past releases, that's always what happens. It's usually a month or two beforehand when they officially get registered that they're announced. I mean, I wonder how good they are on a uh, jumping out of a plane or on a roller coaster, Stephen. Shh, Jared. Shh, shit. shit. You're, you're crossing don't the line. Anybody. Don't, yeah. don't, cr- don't cross the line. Shh. Um, See, when I said R5-2 earlier, I actually meant 2, not T-O-O. Yeah. Oh, Stephen, I'll cut stop it. I'll, I'll cut it out. I'll cut it out. Stop it, Stephen. Right. Don't forget to cut it out. So we'll see what happens. We, it, you know, I think Canon has really done a good job of keeping their, their lips shut these days. Yes. It, it's crazy. There are really no leaks, at least that we know of now. Yeah. It will happen. I mean, it will happen right, right before. And all the stuff will happen like floodgates. But right now, they're keeping everything under wraps. And dude, that's what I'm dreading. We're in limbo right now. You know, there's nothing being released. There's no industry news. And then what's going to happen is gonna, there's going to be new Sony, new Nikon, new Canon, new everything all in the same month. And we're going to be scrambling. Happens every time. It's usually the end of the year, though, like September, October time frame. Yeah. So we'll see. Well, you know, what I wrote in Photo News Fix this week is that my my worry is that people are going to be disappointed by the R5 Mark II. Sure. And the reason they're going to be disappointed is because it's a evolutionary step, not a revolutionary step, which the R5 already was. And so you can't expect them to be revolutions from any company, Nikon, Canon, Sony, Olympus, Fuji, Panasonic. You're not going to get those revolutionary jumps again you'll get evolutionary jumps. Well, like the A93, that to me was a revolutionary jump. But beforehand, it was always an evolutionary jump with the A92, for example. That was just a simple evolutionary jump. Yeah. So I just think it's going to be, whatever it is, if they have a newer sensor, cool, right? I think that's going to be fine. They'll update it. uh, And and I think it's going to be, obviously, I think it's going to be a super solid camera for video, super solid camera for stills. People love the 45 megapixels of it. Um, R1 is going to be, Hopefully the 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 evolu- the revolution. Uh, we hope, man. We hope. I hope so. Uh, one of the things. Let let let's move into this. I saw this article. Apple Vision Pro owners complain of headaches, neck issues, and black eyes. Oh, good. Yeah, 
Yeah, let, let's read. Some Apple Pro owners, and this is coming from Mac Rumors. Uh, some Apple Vision Pro owners. Oh, the reason I'm doing this is I want to I want to tell you what Apple said, and it's kind of f- stupid. Uh, some Apple Vision Pro owners have been dealing with health issues related to wearing of the headset, according to reports from Market Watch. The site spoke to Vision Pro owners, experienced headaches and neck pain, among other issues. I haven't worn them since my trip. Hmm. And I've come to the realization, and I said this to you, that it's more of an entertainment thing for me for sure. uh, while I'm on an airplane. Did I feel a little off on the airplane with it after a while? The answer is I did. I stuck through it. That would kill me because I already yeah. am a type of person that gets a slight headache when I'm flying uh, just with the different air pressure changing and all that. With this on top of that, I would probably have the worst headache ever. You probably would. So yeah. let's see. Emily Ullman, marketing chief of Hopscotch Interactive, said she got two super dark black eyes. Well, stop playing Mike Tyson's punch out in the game <laughs> in the visor. I mean, uh, then you wouldn't have to worry about black eyes after wearing the Vision Pro for the first time, likely caused by weight on the cheeks. Well, maybe she just doesn't have good cheeks. Maybe she doesn't have good cheek structure. She I'm needs just some saying. chunky cheeks like you need some you need some stuff there Ian be be. Beecraft, CEO of consulting firm Signal, oh, I remember them, and t- uh, told MarketWatch that he had pain at the base of his skull and his upper back. Like, okay. Uh, work out, maybe, bro. Maybe you need to work out. <laughs> there have also been complaints about the Vision Pro on Reddit from, see, anytime you go to Reddit, like anytime you go to the comment sections to listen to what people have to say, it's there's usually some other thing going on. Oh, yeah. Right? Um Pro on Reddit from users experience ongoing headaches, eye strain, and a pain from the weight of the device. Some users have had luck with modifying straps and third-party products, and others other people have no issues with the headset at all. Apple declined to comment on the customer's complaints directly. Market watch to its users guidelines okay apple recommends taking a break from the headset every 20 to 30 minutes during the acclimation period and to stop using the headset when feeling unwell apple does not recommend that people experiencing eye strain headaches or pain continue to use device the device so does that mean that you can return it if you're if you're facing those issues good question obviously if you're having an issue don't wear it uh but every 20 to 30 minutes taking a break that's like defeats the whole purpose the thing isn't easy to take on and put you know isn't comfortable to begin with i think i would probably fall into this category of like people having headaches and stuff like that well because i i get weird when i start using those 360 vr devices my my head gets all messed up uh and i probably could only wear 20 to 30 minutes too i wore it for four hours on the airplane i i mean i wore it i wore it for uh for like four hours on the plane, I slept in it while on the plane while having yeah, the Yeah, it doesn't uh, seem to bother you at on. all. But for me, uh, it, it might. My eyes are a little weird. Yeah. I yeah, think it's so. hit or miss, though. I think you're either a person that gets slight headaches from wearing devices like this or you're totally fine. Yeah. Anyway, to wrap it up, don't go on roller coasters. <laughs> no. How about wearing it on a roller coaster? Oh, that would be horrible. What if I was doing spatial video Ooh. for other people that had the Vision Pro? That you could do if it, if it had a chin strap and I could really strap it to my face and it gave you a first person perspective and you were recording uh, that. Or you could actually basically you can use the cell phone, the Apple, uh, the iPhone 15 to make spatial video, which I did in my garage to just to see what it would look like. I have never um, used that yet. Yeah, I you could try it on. I put spatial video in there. Does it actually feel like you're in that yeah, environment? It does. It <laughs> does. Interesting. Yeah, because it, it uses like it likes 3D ish, basically. Wow. I don't even know how um, to get to that setting. Oh, it gives you that option. If you open up your camera, there's a Vision Pro uh, icon in the bottom. And then you would and then it tells you to turn your phone horizontally and allows you to under video while you're in video, not for stills. Or maybe it does stills, too. You see? Yeah, it? I don't even see it now. It should be at the bottom. I haven't done it in a while. I don't see any options for Vision Pro. I don't know. Maybe it's because I never paired this phone with a Vision Pro. Look, look. Yeah, mine doesn't have that. It's just there. That must just be for you. I guess it's only if you paired your phone with an Apple Vision Pro or it knows that you've logged on to a Vision Pro with your Apple ID account. Do you have a 15 Plus? I have a 15 Pro? Pro Max. Yeah. Oh, weird. Something's wrong. You see it? It's right there on your left. No, it's not. Yeah, that thing that's X'd out. No, that's a flash symbol. Oh. <laughs> You're just blind. I don't know blind. why you don't have it. I am just blind. No, I, I get it. It makes sense Apple if you like, paired it with... Like, why do you need to take spatial video if you have nothing to view it on? Yeah, but you could take spatial video and send it to your friend. I, just to I don't know. It. Maybe I have to enable something in the video settings. Maybe. Maybe you do. But uh, anyway, I'm expecting the next couple months to be pretty 
action packed leading into the summer. There's got to be stuff from Sony. There's got to be stuff from Canon. There's got to be like I had a call with Panasonic recently Ooh. about their new firmware. Right. I'm on the I'm, I'm back in the Panasonic world because I'm like, well, shit, I should get an L mount camera. So we're seeing if I can get an L mount camera from Panasonic. And they updated us on their latest firmware that comes out on the 20th for their camera. I will say they added a firmware. Most of it's video related, but they added pre shooting. My Is that camera for doesn't raw do pre shooting for both. Hmm, interesting. It was doing they, 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 now they let me know that their focus is primarily on 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 the video side, not so much the stills, but it has pre-shooting option if you're in the uh, electronic shutter mode, which is insane. So I got to go. I got to go pick up my negatives now. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If there's not a lot of photo news, there's just not a lot of photo news. Hope you enjoy our discussion that sprinkles in some photo news this time around. We do release these on Friday. Um, as audio only and we've been holding the podcast uh, on on youtube because of releasing other videos on thursday we just don't want to basically release them too close together and by the way guys we are turning into a coaster podcast so oh, yeah get ready Frono's, Frono's coasters you know if i commented <laughs> to them i'm like yeah Frono's coasters and i post on Frono's photo.com i have a they'd be like well let's see some samples i'd be like no Okay, guys, you can text at the 313-710-9729 or head on over to the YouTube and listen to the audio over there. Uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you go over there, just let us know that um, Jared's a global influencer in the comments so that I know that you got to this section of the one hour and plus podcast. Uh, Jared's a global influencer. Jared's a global. Steven, not as much. Jared, more global influencer. Great. Anything else you want to say, Stephen? No, I'm just trying to find if there's a setting on my phone for this stupid. All right, you keep doing that. Video. <laughs> I'm going to get out of here. Uh, uh, thank you guys very much for listening. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya. Bye.